Well, how do we avoid emptiness, restlessness, and boredom? Jesus says in verse 23, and that's what, look back at Revelation. What I love about Revelation is he never leaves you hanging. He always tells you how to solve the problem. I will kill her children with uh, death, verse 23. All the churches will know that I'm he who searches the heart. I give each one of you according to your works. Now, to the rest of you, verse 24, in Thyatira, and as many as who do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast to what you have till I come. What does the Lord say? What he says to all of them. Repent. I gave her time, verse 21, to repent. Unless, verse 22, they repent, they are going to face my judgment. There is a universal call by the Lord to holy living. Galatians 6, remember? They were three hours from Galatia. They would have had this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. What do you reap when we don't repent of our sins? Boredom, (laughs) emptiness, feeling useless, feeling restless, frustration and fear and God says that's what he offers to disobedience you say what about the grace of God I'm glad you asked that real quickly look at Titus 2 now Titus 2 explains the grace of God and Titus 2 starting in verse 11 because I always hear people say well I'm under grace I am too what is grace verse 11 The grace of God that brought you salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, what does grace do? Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the glorious hope. What what is the grace of God? When we were floating this way toward destruction, Jesus turns our canoe around, we're going this way. Grace is how we say no to sin, how we paddle. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. What is Satan's purpose? He came to kill and steal and destroy. That's why, look what it says in Revelation 2.24. People that don't repent of their sin understand the depths of Satan. Satan kills our joy. He steals our security of feeling secure in Christ. He destroys our fruitfulness. That's what Satan does, even to believers. But what's God's amazing offer? Verse 25, hold fast. He who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, verse 26. Uh, In verse 28, I will give him the morning star. In verse 29, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. You know what's amazing? And I just want to close with this. Remember it says in 1 Peter 2, 11, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your souls. Bonnie and I had the privilege of addressing medical missionaries in Thailand uh, six, seven hundred of them, who all worked in closed countries. They were all in either China, North Korea, Myanmar, um, you know, India. I mean, they were in all the closed countries, Muslim countries, closed countries. And all these doctors came out for a two-week conference to recertify their credentials and then to share their ministry. And I'll never forget the testimony of this one. A lady got up and said, we moved to Myanmar. And she said, Myanmar is a land where 90% of all the men over age 18 are addicted to opium, like opiates, like heroin. She said, uh, it has the longest continuous civil war, and she said, it has more shrines to Buddha and demons than any other country in the world per capita. And she said, we picked it because it's the darkest spot on earth. And she went there with her husband as a medical doctor, and she actually shared her testimony and wept and said, it is the hardest thing we've ever done to share the gospel in this dark, drug-addicted land. But she said, we're doing it because we believe that the Lord called us, as 1 Peter 2 says, to be his servants, to be a light to the darkest people. How do you think they endured doing that in that place? Simply this, they did not want to give in to sin and destroy the rewards we get for serving God with our lives. And that's the lesson that God gave through Thyatira.